Call the meeting to order. Meeting of the Carver Select Board, Friday, March 13th. Um, we have an agenda. The purpose of this meeting was really just to provide an outline of the uh, intentions of the board in moving forward with a replacement for the town administrator. Uh, however, um, in light of the uh, spread and fear of the coronavirus, I have asked uh, uh, our health agent and our emergency management director to uh, give us a brief update on uh, the status uh, within town of the, um, our, our preparation uh, and plans for dealing with the uh, coronavirus uh, and any other updates they feel to provide. So if uh, Mr. Walsh and Mr. Fogg would uh, provide us with that update, I'd appreciate it. Good morning. First of all, excuse my casual attire. I come to work sometimes Fridays and didn't realize I was going to be doing this, so I would address differently. Um, so yesterday, actually on Tuesday, um, I decided to schedule a meeting in the EOC. And you are? Um, I'm Tom Walsh, Emergency Management Thank Director for the town. Kevin, introduce yourself. Kevin Fogg, Board of Health Agent, Town Thank of Carmen. You. So, um, on Tuesday, I thought it would be a good idea to schedule a meeting, which we did schedule for yesterday morning, um, to bring together <clears throat> all the parties that might have a, um, an interest in um, running departments or, um, the, uh, or sharing information. And so we did meet yesterday morning uh, in the Emergency Operations Center. Because um, between the time I scheduled the meeting and by the time we had the meeting. It had been declared a um, global pandemic, and the state had um, declared a state of emergency. So it was particularly timely. Um, yesterday morning, we had the DPH and the uh, my, myself, representatives from emergency medical services, police, fire, schools, operations, and maintenance. Uh, Selectman's office Lane was there, and. Um, we kind of got a little off track, was well, or on track, uh, immediately because we dealt with when Scott, when Scott and Eve arrived with the issue that they had going on um, at the school, which I think everyone's aware of now. And uh, why, why don't you just repeat it? Uh, um, there was a possibility of um, I think the number started at 17. Um, children that might have been exposed uh, from Carver who were at the Celtics game last Friday evening and um, there was a question as to whether or not they may or may not have had contact with an individual on the other uh, basketball team, the Utah Jazz, that might have, that has been confirmed to have um, the coronavirus. and. Um, the meeting kind of started like it looked like they did have a contact and, and Scott contacted the state epidemiology department right away and, and told them the situation to get some guidance. Kind of by the end of the day, all of the facts being um, vetted out, it, it appeared that maybe there wasn't any, um, but couldn't be positive. So the, uh, the decision was made to close the school today to investigate and actually talk to the children and, and parents or whatever to find out whether or not. And it seemed to be, uh, according to the Mass Department of Public Health, people that were within three to six feet of the person who was um, in found to be infected. And not from there, no <clears throat> domino theory, you know, anything that then that person was near or anything. Just that close contact with the infected person was what they're investigating today. And um, so that's kind of why school was closed today, is my understanding. Um, we also, uh, you know, went over the general condition of, I think, what everyone knows about, um, you know, what's uh, the coronavirus is that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's spreading and um, there's a lot that's not known about it. I, I think one of the things that is known about it is it seems to be easier to catch than the normal flu. And um, that's part of the reason it's become the pandemic that it has. Um, what its actual uh, fatality rate is and things like that are changing all the time, depending on if you had all the data of everyone who had it, it might be low or down near regular flu or 
I saw something last night that in Italy it was, they were looking at maybe 6%, which is very high. Um, but I don't, I don't know for sure. But we talked about all of that. We talked about the general recommendations of, you know, hand washing and um, social distancing and canceling, canceling gatherings and um, took some steps because of that. We um, decided to post uh, some stuff around the town hall about um, sanitizing your hands when you come in and um, social distancing um, and um, Kevin you posted um, that stuff and I saw something <clears throat> on the front lobby as well um, and we talked about some of the concerns of getting some of the supplies we might need and this is something from from the point of view as the um, emergency medical services chief I've been dealing with for a couple of weeks making sure we can get what N95 masks we can get, which are the only ones that would really block the virus. It's, um, and um, have our isolation equipment um, and what protocol changes we might make in how we respond or how our police respond to medical emergencies. So that's uh, a work in progress is still going on at this point. We have um, given instructions to our public safety answering point of uh, questions to ask um, when someone calls and says they have the flu and they want an ambulance or they think they have the flu. Um, now those questions kind of center around travel and, and the like, which if you get into a community spread situation, that'll become a little less pertinent, but nevertheless, um, is that, that we've, we've taken that step um, last week. Um, and we talked about the decontamination capabilities that we have. Dave Seedendorf and John Woods were there. And um, they are um, been doing some of it in the schools, and uh, we're going to be ordering some more supplies if we can get them along those lines as well. Um, Kevin, are you good? You got um, <clears throat> just, just to add a few things, um, we have increased the number of dispensers around the town hall. Um, and as uh, Tom mentioned, we do have a <clears throat> dispenser at the entrance with a sign asking for people to um, use it uh, prior to coming into the town hall. Um, I have uh, posted uh, the COVID-19 fact sheets around the town hall. Uh, those were probably one of the better ones that I've seen. Uh, it was prepared by John, Johns Hopkins and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's concise and to the point. Uh, it's colorful uh, so it does catch your eye. Um, I, uh, there is a, uh, a DPH uh, update uh, slash link uh, that I review daily uh, that's also posted on our website uh, so that anybody in the community that wants to check in to, to that website um, it's changed almost daily um, so you don't have to you don't have to look around you just uh, click on the link and you're you're up to date uh, I'm also uh, in an email chain associated with the emergency preparedness uh, uh, organization uh, that puts me in contact with all of the uh, Board of Health uh, uh, Board of Health agents uh, within uh, Plymouth County. Uh, so we're constantly going back with uh, questions and answers and guidance and what are you doing, how are you handling this, this came up, what did you do about it, uh, that type of thing. So there's, uh, you know, there's a sense of working together and uh, that's going to be helpful going forward. Um, so, and uh, the last, uh, last thing is that uh, the Board of Health has a scheduled meeting coming up on Tuesday, uh, which I'm sure this is going to be one of our main topics. Uh, after that meeting, I can certainly update uh, the board as to where we're going. Uh, but as you all know, it's something that changes daily, and uh, we're just trying to keep up with the information as it comes. That's I also want to mention that we, um, you know, all of the sources that we're looking at are recommending not having large gatherings that you can avoid <coughs> having. Um, and I think all um, after school events and drama club and things like that have been canceled now. Yeah, um, they were doing Mamma Mia uh, for a play, and I think they've canceled that for the weekend. Right. And um, the. Um, 
St. Patrick's Day um, dinner is, has been canceled. Um, one of the mobile home parks reached out to me and asked what they should be doing regarding social gatherings and the like, and I gave them that same advice. Uh, and we'll also be reaching out to the other elderly mobile home parks with, with similar advice. Um, the library has been closed today, and um, I believe the events over the next couple of weeks um, where they use the room for different, uh, the rooms they have over there for different meetings and things are going to be curtailed as well. Massachusetts Emergency Management, along with the DPH, has got involved as well, and I think the governor's basically asked MEMA to bring together all of the state agencies. And I, the um, State Emergency Operations Center has been activated as of this morning, and I don't know for how long. But one of the things, when I spoke with them this morning, that I know they're going to be looking at is um, now that there's $15 million that was uh, allocated yesterday um, by the State House, uh, was going to see if they can be of assistance in dealing with communities that don't have the necessary emergency isolation supplies or disinfectant supplies that they, that they, might, that they might need. So hopefully some progress can be made on that. Um, from the state, so that it's not 351 towns running around trying to buy everything. Maybe there can be more coordinated effort because that is one of the things we're running into. You can't buy disinfectant, you can't buy masks, you can't buy isolation suits. We're, fortunately, we're in pretty good shape. Questions from the board? Um, working in a hospital. Um, the M N95 masks, um, are we having trainings on them, how to use them, put them on correctly? Um, and also we have a sign off list to make sure that police, fire, and EMS are all signed off to make sure they know how to use them correctly. Because that's all, one of the all issues. Of, all, all of my people know how to use the mask. Thank you, I appreciate that very that's much. That's part of their regular training because, I mean, this we don't only worry about this. What A lot of what we're worrying about here, even though we're worrying about it more, we worry about it every day. Um, and um, dealing with the flu and uh, people who get sick. So, yes, all of that uh, isolation um, and is, is training is done on a regular basis. Thank you. Mark has one, yeah. Can we just discuss, or have you, have you discussed with um, town departments or established policies on when people are going to not come to work? Obviously, if they're sick, they don't come to work. If, if your wife is exposed, you come to work if your wife was exposed to somebody who was exposed. Do you come to work? How how far down? We haven't set up a, a protocol for that yet. But no again, that'll be something that we'll be talking about on. Kevin, can you use the microphone? Uh, just Thank to re you. just to repeat, um, that has not been set yet, but it's a, a topic that we'll be discussing at the Tuesday meeting. And again, I'll I'll update the board on that when okay. when I have that. Thank you. I, I just want to thank both of you for staying on top of it. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, just uh, a little bit more on this topic. Uh, we received yesterday, in fact, it was sent out to all the cities and towns, uh, an order from the governor suspending uh, certain open meeting law requirements, specifically that um, uh, we are relieved from the requirement of uh, that it, we conduct our meetings in a public place that's open and physically accessible to the public. Uh, provided that the public body that uh, boards make a provision to ensure public access to the deliberations of the public body for interested members of the public through adequate alternative means. Uh, that means going forward, um, we will be deciding uh, about uh, uh, public attendance, say for instance, the next select board meeting on Tuesday night. We will have it live being broadcast from here. Um, but um, I think the phrase that's going to be, you're going to hear a lot of is in an abundance of caution. Um, I know one of my fears is that we do a good job throughout the country mitigating the crisis and keeping people from getting sick yeah. so that some people end up saying, see, there was nothing to it. Um, but I think there are countries in the world today that would argue that it is something that's very real. But I would rather implement all the necessary cautions that we can implement to make sure that uh, uh, if this virus is as um, uh, dangerous as the World Health Organization and Center for Disease Control is telling us it is, 
that we do everything to try to keep our citizens as safe as possible as we move forward. Um, we, uh, we, and also anyone that needs to attend public meetings, uh, we need to make remote access available to them uh, as they go forward. I should mention it's no decisions have been made. This is all fast breaking news, but just everyone should keep in mind there's a potential town meeting could be impacted by this. Uh, you know, when you're talking about bringing uh, 100, 200, 300 people together into a meeting, um, obviously that might have to be postponed. Uh, and then also uh, even town elections could possibly be impacted. I'm sure we'll get more direction from the state level on that because um, <coughs> obviously we're not the only town having town meetings and town elections, so I'm sure we'll get some advisories on that as well. But I just want to throw it out there uh, that the board will be considering all this. I think probably for the immediate future, it's likely that we will restrict public access to the meeting Tuesday night, and all boards will have to be, be able to make their own decisions on uh, allowing obviously a public hearing is going to be challenging uh, for those boards that uh, planning board and so forth that might want to be having public hearings. This is all new territory. We have to work our way through this, uh, and um, we will keep you uh, as up to date as we can uh, as we move forward. Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything, Bob. If um, public's going to be restricted from um, coming to meetings or whatnot. I feel that it's duty of us to ensure that either it's cable cast via our cable company or they have a recording device to record their meetings. Um, and if a town has to go out and purchase some, so each one can have those so they're physically recorded and those are kept um, longer than the term of what the open meeting law says is that once the meeting minutes are created, you can get rid of the yeah. recording, but I think that should be kept longer. So if people want to go and they want to listen to it, it is available to people to listen to, or we can put it on the town website. Uh, yeah, and I think we can that. get it on Area 58 website as well. Like right, at least done. something recorded so people can hear what the deliberations are going on. I, uh, the Area 58 is going to be having its own deliberations as to whether they want to you know, have someone sit in here to, through a whole meeting. I've asked them if they could just arrange to set the, uh, everything ready to go on a panoramic shot. They can come in, hit a button, record the entire meeting, and then turn it off at the end. Um, and again, the phrase of the day is abundance of caution. Uh, I would rather um, that we take all appropriate cautions to make sure nothing happens uh, and then perhaps uh, find out down the road that it wasn't necessary, which I, I, I personally believe based on the level of um, concern that we're seeing worldwide and within our own country. I mean, when you've got major sports organizations shutting down their whole seasons, um, those aren't decisions that are made lightly. So uh, at any rate, we will be operating uh, to make sure that the public is as protected as it can be and we'll make decisions uh, as more information becomes available about, the, again, the potential for town meeting being postponed, elections being postponed, whatever it might be, uh, as we get some more direction. This is all breaking news uh, as it develops. So. Um, Ron, could I just add one quick sure. thing? So I just want people to, to be made aware that um, even though it will be broadcast on Area 58, if you, if you don't have um, cable, Area 58 then puts it out on YouTube. For the, I know a lot of people already know that, but some folks might not. So all they would need would be an access to a computer. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and for that matter, I think I'm sure Area 58 would be glad to make a, a recording for them uh, on a DVD if they have a DVD player. So we'll do everything we can uh, you know, to, uh, to accommodate the public to make sure they know what's going on uh, moving forward. So with that <coughs> discussion, um, we move on to, and, and today really is not intended to be an in-depth, uh, deep dive into the, uh, the process now that we need to uh, replace the town administrator. It's really procedural to bring you up to speed on what our options are, what we've done so far. Uh, Sarah has been running point on this uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, <clears throat> so I'd ask her to bring us up to speed and just... Basically, everyone is aware that the town administrator is scheduled to leave on April 17th. That also may be somehow affected based on uh, what happens moving forward. Uh, but he will be leaving at some point. Uh, and uh, so that we, uh, as a board, are, you know, had agreed that we wanted to try to have a replacement in place uh, before his departure. It's not required, but it is something that we would prefer to do. 
Uh, and our range of options is from looking at internal candidates to operate on a short-term basis to uh, find a, uh, a part-time or full-time interim, uh, or we could even, you know, uh, consider full-time candidates. I mean, we, the board has a range of alternatives. Right now, I'll let Sarah fill you in on what we're pursuing at this, at this time, uh, but uh, the, I, I just want to stress that transparency is uh, also the watchword for the board. I think if and when we get to interviews, uh, we would want to invite uh, some, some of our other uh, um, town leaders, uh, you know, chiefs and whatnot to be involved in uh, the interview process so that uh, there's a comfort level in whatever decision the board arrives at for um, replacing Mr. Milanowski. So Sarah, if you want to take it from there. Thank you. I um, prepared just like a page and a half of a summary of what's going on here. Um, what has been going on since um, February 25th involving our interim search. Um, so, and then I backed it up with all the emails, the documents. Um, it was a little difficult printing out the emails because as you know, when it's town email, you, you, you click on one and it only gives you responses to that person back and forth and it misses all the 14 that were in between. So, so they're all like page one of something. So that's just that page. Um, Essentially, on uh, February 25th, um, this, when we had our select board meeting, the board um, agreed that I should be the point person, Ron was going to be out of town, and for me to contact the Collins Center for Public Management regarding the search for interim TA, just to get them to tell us what the process is. I contacted Michael Ward, who's the director of the Collins Center, on February 26th sent two emails and left one phone message and asked, A, about the process for their organization to confidentially search for an interim TA for, for Carver, B, how many candidates we would be interviewing, C, what's the timeline for a search, and D, what is the fee, if any. Um, and of course, on all this correspondence, I made sure that I copied the chair and our assistant TA, Elaine Weston. Um, we want to be you know, open and transparent in this whole process. So um, Mike Ward <clears throat> called me back on the 26th, and he outlined their process, which is as follows. The Collins Center maintains a list of interested and qualified interim TAs. The town needs to send a job description, the town's timeline, and the name of a contact person to the Collins Center. Um, the pool of interim TAs would then respond directly to the town, and the Collins Center steps out of the process at that point. Um, and there is no charge for this interim TA search, which was really nice to hear. Um, <clears throat> if the Collins Center does a search for a permanent TA for the town, that process is more complicated and there would be a fee. Um, and I'll, come, I'll circle around back to this at the end as well. On March 3rd, I sent the job description after consulting on the phone with the chair. Uh, and that was just cut and pasted directly out of our uh, town's govern town governing bylaws. Um, just with a description of what the TA's job is supposed to be. And I said that our timeline to hire the interim was as soon as possible and that we were looking to retain the interim anywhere from possibly six months to a year. With the chair's direction, I, I told them that I was the contact person, and again, to copy the chair and Elaine. On March 4th, um, <clears throat> Mike Ward responded that I had sent them what, I, what they needed. And um, I also put us, he also put us in touch with Steve McGoldrick, McGoldrick, who manages their list of retired town administrators and town managers. On March 5th, as a follow-up to a phone call with Greg Corpo of KP Law, with the chair's direction, I wrote to Mike Ward with an addendum saying we would need to know if any candidate wishes their candidacy to be considered only in executive session. And the reason for that is so that we'll know whether or not to have the preliminary screening stages of our search in executive session rather than open session. And so that in, in this whole process, if a candidate is already employed somewhere else and doesn't wish for their employer to know that they may be looking around, um, there's a certain point up to, up to which we can have it in executive session, and then there's a certain point after which we have to conduct it in open meeting. Um, <clears throat> let's see, on March 5th, okay, hold on, did that. March 7th, um, the chair and I uh, discussed what the candidates need to send us, and it was real simple, statement of interest and a resume. And I sent those to um, Mike Ward at the Collins Center, those two points. On March 9th, Mike Ward called me and uh, I sent an email to Steve McGoldrick asking him the question that I had been asking Mike Ward. Mike Ward wasn't real sure of the answer, so I um, emailed Steve McGoldrick, who is the one in charge of kind of this pool of interim TAs. 
um, <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, asking the question, okay, uh, I said that my understanding was that the Collins Center has a pool of interim TA candidates who are retired TAs or retired town managers who, since they were retired, <clears throat> would only be able to work part-time hours, which is 19 hours, and part-time salary. Ward had said there were a few people on their list who weren't retired, so I asked McGoldrick to clarify the current status of their applicant pool, and I also stressed that any applicant should not only send his or her application to me, but copy to the chair and the assistant TA, because <laughs> I had already received a couple of responses where I was the only one they wrote to, and I've been very insistent on that whole process. Again, on March 9th, uh, the, Ron emailed me back saying, well, you know, Sarah, we haven't really determined whether or not we're looking for part-time or full-time, and <clears throat> I explained that I had presented to the board that I thought the Collins Center only had retired folks. Um, turns out they, they don't necessarily. Ron said he'd like to keep our options open, as he just explained. So um, I emailed the Collins Center and um, Steve McGoldrick and said to him that we, you know, even if they have full-time people, we, we want to keep all our options open and to, um, to uh, just to do that regarding part-time versus full-time interim TAs. I also reiterated the thing about copying the correspondence yet again. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. Oh, and I also stated very um, clearly that I'm not taking phone calls. I don't want anything happening that's not in writing. And all our town emails are public documents, so that's, a, that's why I said that. Um, on March 11th, uh, the chair and I conferred about two questions that had come up in some of our discussions. The first was, is it true that since the Collins Center is a public entity, that the procurement law does not apply to our choosing the Collins Center to help the town of Carver in our search for an interim TA? And the second question is, was the one and a half weeks lead time between when I first sent the Collins Center our request for applicant statements of interest and resumes, and our March 16th deadline, which is this coming Monday, for applicants to return their applications. Was that enough lead time for their applicants to respond? Uh, on on uh, f uh, March 11th as well, Steve McCormick responded by saying, and this is a quote from him, first, the center provides this service to all cities and towns without charge, so the procurement law does not apply. Just as an aside, if there was a charge, transactions between the University of Massachusetts and cities and towns are exempt from Chapter 30B of the General Laws, Section 1B4. So that settles that question. We don't have to go out and get three bids to, if we're going to hire if we want to hire some, as long as we're using the Collins Center. The answer to the second question is that we believe the lead time is sufficient, and that's. That's my whole summary that summarizes this entire email chain and, and the, um, there was a couple, there were a couple of interactions between myself and Greg Corbo that are at the back of this as well as a document that he gave me which is called search committee protocol and this is, and this applies only to um, a search for a permanent TA. Not the Thank you, sir. I appreciate you well, uh, running point and all that. Certainly, um, no problem. Oh, and, and I just should add, I'm sorry, run it. Uh, to date, we've only had two applicants, but I, again, I didn't check my town email this morning, right. so there may be more. The deadline is Monday, March 16th. Correct. At 4 um, p.m. <clears throat> and and uh, we can, dis we, we can uh, you know, I, I think the plan is that um, Sarah, after the 16th, come the 17th, uh, you, if you would be willing to pull together what we received, mm -hmm. make copies, make sure that everything gets out to all of the board members. Okay. And then uh, once they have that uh, and have an opportunity to absorb it, then the next thing would be to do would be to schedule um, a meeting. Uh, I don't know, and, and we can actually, uh, maybe uh, let's, uh, if we haven't posted yet, maybe add a quick discussion of protocol, how we're gonna move forward on this uh, for Tuesday night. Um, we can discuss uh, if we want to have a preliminary meeting before we see candidates in terms of how we want to proceed uh, or if we just want to start, in, you know, set up a time to interview candidates. It would be nice, depending on how many we get, if we can maybe get it all done in one day. But if that, we're going to have to coordinate schedules. As, as we know, Bob and Alan tend to work opposite schedules, so we're going to have to try to find right. something that works for, for everybody. Uh, but the, I think the thing we want to stress is that we want this to be as transparent as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to board members, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be good to have, um, I think, in, invite the chiefs and maybe Meg and maybe 
chairman of the FinCom, people to just sit in because I know there's been a lot of concern. I mean, there's already been suggestions or rumors supposedly that board members have already decided who's coming in. I haven't even seen the list yet, but apparently Bob has already decided who we're hiring. Uh, and. Um, so the, well, too many rumors. Yeah. Do you want to let us know who it is, Bob? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I do want to disclose, I did get a message, uh, I think it was for a, a headhunter, I don't know if you all got it. Too. Yeah, I think the I same one. So the public knows, right? wants to participate in it. Yeah, uh, I want the public to know that we did get that, and um, yeah, yeah, I got it. I went into my junk email. Uh, yeah. I responded well. to him. <laughs> I, at first of all, that he had attachments. Mm -hmm. I don't open attachments from people I don't know. So, so I wrote back to him and copied Ryan Elaine and said, you know, "Who are you, basically?" And because I'm not opening your attachments, and he wrote back and you know, um, saying that it was. You know, good to be safe. He was a headhunter. He'd be happy to help us. I said, well, we'll get back to you if we need you. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'd ask you, Sarah, if you can get those distributed, mm -hmm. hopefully electronically to all of us I will. Uh, mm -hmm. on, on Tuesday morning. We hope maybe some of us will have a chance to absorb them during the day. But uh, again, then we can decide Tuesday night, do we feel we want to have another meeting like this just for purposes of discussion about how to proceed? Uh, or do we want to jump in and, and schedule candidates and Probably everything else going on in the world will may influence yeah. part of that timing and, as well. And also at that point, um, I've heard back from one of the applicants who said that they don't they don't need to be in executive session. They don't want, need their name to be confidential. Yeah, you probably want to confirm with any candidate. All of them need to know. And I've written to the second one, haven't heard back okay. about that. So, um, if we only have two candidates, um, maybe extending the time frame may be appropriate to see if anybody else wants that, that, to. That's certainly um, something we can discuss depending on how many yeah. we end up getting. Uh, I will say the, the Collin Center is pretty much the go-to place for interims. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think other firms get more involved with if you're going out for a permanent. Mm -hmm. But with that's something we certainly can talk about, about if we want to extend, especially if we find out that town meeting is maybe getting extended and so that the, the, the race to it, because. I know that the uh, Mr. Milanowski's departure date was set basically to accommodate his attendance at town meeting, which obviously isn't required, but it was preferred by the board. So, and I, I just uh, occurred to me this morning, Ron, um, that since it is part of the agreement that we can hire Mr. Mil Milanowski as a consultant on a per diem basis, that his departure date could essentially say the same even if we put town meeting off because yeah. we can ask him to come back at any yeah. point. Right? Yeah. But again, and if if, and again it would, we'd want to be satisfied. That, that, yeah, and it, yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. it, it, okay. And every, everything is basically on the table, Bob. Um, and with that, it, is, he's on a part-time, as a part-time employee from the town, even though he's a consultant. Uh, he's still technically a part-time employee, so we do have hours. Yeah, actually, I don't think we have to the, pay him per diem or anything. I think right, that's what I'm saying. Is it's part of his table, part of his yeah. consultant with yeah. the town is that, and he gets insurance, so he has to be a part-time employee. So therefore, we right. do have hours there that can be utilized. So, yeah. can, right, exactly. Uh, and then, um, but I, I guess the point that I really want to stress is that the intention of the board, and we when we were uh, going through the. Uh, negotiations with the, Mr. Milanowski, uh, we had the opportunity. Uh, council indicated that uh, it was allowed for us to have a discussion since we had to discuss uh, Mr. Milanowski's departure and then departure timing, that it was, uh, it fell within the open meeting laws, uh, even though it's an executive session, to be able to discuss the uh, timing of his appoint uh, successor and so forth. So. Um, there was general agreement that the preference would be to have someone in place before his departure, but that, that is not a requirement. Uh, so that, uh, but I guess I just want to assure the public that our intention is to be as open with this procedure as possible. Uh, I think that as long as it doesn't have to be an executive session, it'll be recorded by Area 58. The interviews can be recorded by Area 58. Uh, we'll uh, allow other folks that we have in attendance to ask questions. Uh, and uh, you know, offer opinions so that the board can make the best decision possible uh, going forward. So that's essentially, we just wanted to give people an update as to where we were, what, the, what our plans were, uh, and uh, it is possible that depending on how things develop, the urgency uh, for a replacement may not be as, uh, as tight a timeline as we originally thought, but again, the board can make those decisions as, as we develop, but I think for the immediate future, the intention is Monday the 16th is the deadline for candidates. 
We'll see who we have at that point in time. Uh, Sarah will get a copy of their resumes to, uh, and, and uh, work uh, application to us. Uh, and then uh, Tuesday night, we can have a brief discussion of uh, how we want to proceed uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd like to see on the next agenda also, if we could, is um, uh, the cr criteria for a search committee, that we put that on as a discussion for, I know it's on the warrant, but also if Tommy is delayed, if we start creating that search committee before you're talking about for a permanent for a permanent search. one of what it is and, and also um, if we're going to seek out a uh, company to do a search for us or not to have that discussion too yeah we, we, I mean, we yeah we can um, we could I guess we could talk about that Tuesday night uh, we can do that in our own sessions as well because right. it's certainly up for grabs um, but so we can have a brief conversation about that so that uh, actually th that can fall within the same yeah. discussion yeah. as long as we have it on there uh, yeah. we can migrate into that thank you uh, any other questions from the board no well, I, I just oh I'm sorry I, I just I just wanted to publicly thank Sarah for all her hard work oh, in this thank you making, yep. making the point this is a lot of good information yeah really. it was it was rough getting people to, <laughs> to do what they were told <laughs> Sarah and I were on uh, speed dial with, yeah. <laughs> with me looking at alligators in Florida uh, at various times so. and I told everyone I thought you were on a business trip yeah Anyway. My, my wife thought I was on a business trip. Yeah, I'm sure so she did. She's not the happiest. So, but. so I just wanted to emphasize, too, if I can, that, and I have no skin in this game, but it, if we do use the Collins Center for a permanent as well, the nice thing about that is you don't have to go out to bid, which is a big time saver, as you And I think it's what we've used in the past. Yeah. Uh, for past yeah. searches, uh, mm -hmm. for the, certainly for the past search. Mm -hmm. so. So. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, everyone, and please stay safe.